Welcome in to a special interview from the Association for Materials Protection and Performance. My name is Ben Dubose, and I'm a staff writer with AMP Publications. Today, we're joined by Cindy O'Malley, Chief Operations Officer and the AMP Global Center Executive Director. Cindy, good morning. How are you? I'm great. How are you, Ben? Doing well. Thanks for joining us. And in this special interview, we're going to be discussing some of the corrosion concerns possibly related to the deadly collapse of the Champlain Towers condominium building back on June 24th in Surfside, Florida, near Miami. At this juncture, we want to stress that no definitive conclusions have been reached and multiple investigations remain ongoing. However, there has already been a lot written in the media regarding prior engineering reports and potential links to the corrosion of the reinforcing steel within the concrete, which is commonly known as rebar corrosion. Understandably, many people are looking for answers not only regarding this tragedy, but asset owners and stakeholders and many other buildings all over the world, they also have a keen interest in trying to prevent this type of incident from occurring elsewhere. So based on Cindy's years of experience within the corrosion industry, we're gonna take a deeper look at some of the key questions that people may have. Cindy, I think a good place to start would be with you explaining your background and what gives you some unique insight in these areas. Can you tell us a bit more about your career? Sure, I can, thank you. Um, for, I guess the 24 years, at least, of, of, of my career, I've, I've directed and worked on at least hundreds of uh, coding failure analysis projects. Um, in addition to conducting and managing numerous materials testing programs. So my roles have included technical support and peer review of projects, um, material performance, consultants, and engineering. Um, many instances, I was called upon for legal support services as a testifying and non-testifying expert on code of coding failure investigations. So I've also directed quite a few uh, uh, efforts to provide paint corrosion and material testing services. And those that included, you know, coatings research, paint failure investigations, compositional analysis. So I've really dedicated my career to understanding the causes of corrosion of materials and, insist and assisting in preventing and mitigating the devastating um, effects of material failure. So material protection and performance, I consider it vital to really a safer, a safer and more sustainable world. So what can potentially cause a building to collapse? Well, there could be so many um, contributing factors. So, so many things we can point to, weather, extremes with environment, it could be foundational issues, you know, below the structure, uh, postponement of repairs and maintenance, unfortunately, materials degradation, engineering and inspection failures. There are a lot of possibilities. Um, and right now, all we can do is speculate about what happened in Florida. However, it is very important to note that, that we need to find out what the root cause of the failure is so we can avoid a repeat occurrence uh, and tragedy such as this. So it seems like there may have been um, a combination of factors in this case, as well as a, what I'll call an interceding event or a series of events, um, like the construction next door, the deterioration of the pool deck and the garage supports um, that have been reported, um, as you know, in the media. They could have all contributed to this collapse. Is there anything about how buildings were designed 40 plus years ago that may have contributed to this? I know there's been a lot written about this being built in the early 1980s. Is there something from that period or earlier that's particularly of concern in an incident such as this? Well, there has been a lot of technological process um, and progress, uh, processes that have improved in progress since then. Um, but even in the 1980s, there was significant progress from previous uh, decades. So in the 80s, one of the things that was realized was that many specifiers were no longer allowing uh, the building of concrete structures with, with chloride or what they call chloride accelerators or chloride accelerated concrete, um, which can lead to a corrosive uh, situation with, with, you know, to the rebar within the concrete. So, um, 
I would say that if there had been a specific design flaw, that it likely would have arisen at some point, you know, over the past 40 years. And if so, um, those issues will likely be prominent in, in the investigation moving forward. What can homeowners or other asset owners do to ensure that their homes, their workplaces, or any other structures for that matter, don't deteriorate and potentially put lives at risk like what we've seen near Miami? Yep, and, and I think this is a, a very important aspect. Ant owners absolutely should keep up with their regular inspections and maintenance. When an inspector or engineer provides their recommendations, of course, there's going to be concerns about the necessity of cost. So that's where you can bring in other professionals, get that second or even a third opinion to put you at ease, but to fully understand why these recommendations are being made. But please don't ignore the issues uh, that are discovered. Um, you don't want to wait to address them because of the, the cost that could be um, associated uh, with the repairs or maintenance. They may seem high, but the cost of failure is almost always more expensive. And in some cases like this tragedy, that, that cost is what we're seeing, the cost of people lives like in Miami. There have been a lot of engineers and experts in recent days that have talked about the failure appearing to originate at the bottom of the building. What is pointing to that as opposed to other theories about maybe the roof construction having a role? So when you watch that, you know, I know it's a horrible video, but when you watch it, it appears to be um, the collapse seems to be as a result of a complete loss of structural support from the bottom. So that's where it, it there, there's a lot of displacement that is shown on that video and it looks, it appears that the supports gave out um, with that great amount of displacement and that that had a domino effect, what they call pancaking. Um, that's what's been uh, referenced most often, at least what, what I've seen in the media and by the experts. So if this was a failure of the foundation, what could have potentially caused it? So a failure of a building's foundation can occur again for several reasons. So the most common cause of failure is the movement of expansive and what they call highly plastic or, or moving soils um, beneath the foundation footings. However, the most common cause of failure certainly does not indicate that is what occurred in this specific case, um, even if they determined that the foundation uh, failed. Um, there is something that could cause a uh, significant foundational failure that is in uh, what we call geotechnical in nature uh, from when the building was originally constructed or erected. Um, it also could have been a sinkhole. It could have been a structural inadequacy um, in a way that the building was built or in how it was designed, or there may have been so much corrosion that caused the degradation that then led to the failure. So where would you start looking to try and figure out the root cause? So looking at some of the images, it seems like maybe the building tended to tilt in one direction during the collapse. And that might indicate a combination of causes that uh, came together. Um, so the questions I guess that I would start with is, was this foundational inadequacy? Um, was it an unexpected geotechnical change? Were the soils highly corrosive? Um, did all these factors converge and cause the collapse? Seeing what the um, sequence of, of the fa failure was will help with the root cause analysis. The investigators are going to need a whole team made up of a combination of structural engineers, the corrosion engineers, the geotechnical engineers, forensic structural engineers, and then also experts in material durability and someone who is an expert in, in modeling. Um, they'll really need to look through the uh, failed components and look at the way the building failed um, to try to figure out what happened. The rescue efforts for those who experienced this tragedy, it's always priority one. Um, the investigative team will be taxed with a compromised site as is the case with these loss of life disasters. They'll need to be able to piece together enough information to help the engineers understand 
what needs to be done uh, to prevent something like this from occurring again. Are there any factors that we're not hearing about in the news right now that might be of relevance? Well, we've yet to hear um, from, from what I've seen and, and, and am aware of significant insight um, about the soil in the area. To someone outside of the field of corrosion or, or materials engineering, that may not seem like an important factor, um, but one of our members, one of the AMP members, who used to work with the uh, Miami uh, Dade uh, Sewer and Water uh, Department mentioned that the soil in that area might be fairly unstable. So it's weathered, it's made up of coral. As I understand that it has chlorides, um, as I mentioned earlier, that are highly corrosive. So that in addition to there could have been um, a subgrade void uh, that developed. So the collapse uh, appears to have initiated from the bottom with a loss, uh, as we mentioned, of structural support. And it appears as though something in the lower portion of the building where the foundation failed. We're likely to hear more about those geotechnical aspects. As we wind down, Cindy, is there anything else you'd like to share about this incident and the ongoing response? I think that the uh, level of destruction and the urgency of the rescue efforts that were necessitated may preclude a definitive answer as to the root cause and the contributing factors that just increases the need for the preventative measures in the design and construction phase for the routine monitoring and inspection by certified accredited professionals. In our industry, we have seen many in incidents that really could have been avoided with the use of inspection during construction and recommended maintenance or repairs that resulted from those inspections. Great insight there. Folks, this is where we will wrap up for Cindy O'Malley, Chief Operations Officer and AMP Global Center Executive Director. I'm Ben DuBose, staff writer with AMP Publications. Thanks for tuning in and please come back soon for more information from AMP.